This video will do a Doppler shift calculation um, applied here to the rotation of the sun to determine what is the shift in wavelength from light uh, coming to the earth just at the edge of the sun. Um, let's say the edge of the sun that's coming towards the earth, rotating towards the earth, and that would be of course a blue shift, but this could also be done at the other edge of the sun that is uh, rotating away from us, and that would be a red shift, a uh, shift to longer wavelengths. But our basic uh, situation here is that we have a sun with a certain mass. Of course, mass doesn't uh, factor into our calculations, but the radius does, and also the time for the sun to complete one rotation, about 25 days at the equator, it's a longer period of time actually towards the poles as the sun is a gaseous object and does not rotate uh, like the earth does as a solid. So we want to do the hydrogen alpha absorption line. Um, I'll just go ahead and put that on here. But for the hydrogen alpha absorption line, it occurs at 656.3 nanometers. So we'll be using that for the wavelength. We want to calculate the change in wavelength that's measured for this. This 656.3 would be a, a situation where the material is not moving away from the Earth or towards the Earth. And that would be the wavelength of the hydrogen alpha, either the absorption line or the emission line. Over on the left side, we have the speed that the uh, edge of the sun is coming towards the Earth. And we have the speed of light to compare to. Well. We have the lambda. We want to calculate delta lambda. The speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, so we know that number. How would we obtain the speed of the edge of the sun if we know it has a certain radius and we know it takes 25 days for one spin? Well, if I draw kind of a top view of this, the earth out here and this edge coming towards us, this material you know, it takes 25 days to make one complete trip, and we can calculate the speed as the distance traveled divided by the time. And going around a circle, we'll assume the sun is a circle. We have 2 pi times the radius. I'm going to go ahead and put the radius of the sun in here, 6.96 .6 times 10 to the 8th meters. And 2 pi r gives us the circumference. The time is 25 days, but we see a mismatch in the units. I have meters here. Of course, the, the speed here and the speed of light, that's need to be the same units. And we'll have the same units on the right side for the delta lambda compared to lambda. So we have meters per second. This is going to end up meters per days if I leave the days here. So how would we uh, convert days into seconds? Well, you might look up uh, an immediate conversion. You could do that with a table, but let's work it out step by step. So there are 24 hours in one day. So that'll cancel off the day units. I multiply these, I'd have the number of hours. And then I am going to take a little shortcut here. Uh, 3,600 seconds for one hour. We could do 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute, but I'll just go ahead and go direct here. So there's our calculation for the speed. You should work this out on your own calculator. I came up with 2.025 times 10 to the third meters per second. I have a habit of not rounding my intermediate results. I'll round the final result. This 25 days is a, an approximate number. So calculating delta lambda. We're going to multiply both sides by lambda. So the delta lambda would equal the wavelength times speed divided by the speed of light. So we'll have 656.3 nanometers times the speed that we just obtained, 2.025 times 10 to the third meters per second. And we need to divide that by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So you, again, you should check this in your own calculator. 
And I'm going to round a little bit here, 4.4 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 nanometers. 4.4 times 10 to the minus 3 nanometers. It is not a big shift. Basically, we're not going to move much from 656.3 nanometers, but it is detectable. Uh, this speed creates a Doppler shift that is detectable. In fact, in uh, a little different topic for uh, the search for planets around stars, um, the technology now, I believe, is to be able to detect the motion of a star uh, back and forth uh, with a speed of less than one meter per second. Uh, we've got uh, 2,000 meters per second here from material at the edge of the sun coming towards us or away from us on the other, other side. So we get a blue shift here and a red shift here. I'm not going to do so, but uh, a blue shift, the wavelength that's measured would be a little bit smaller than 656.3 nanometers. Um, so there's our, our situation using Doppler shift calculations for light. Um, the change in the wavelength is the speed times the original wavelength or the wavelength when the uh, source is at rest with respect to the observer and the divide by the speed of light. You'll notice here, if the speed was zero, then the wavelength shift would be zero. Uh, the Doppler shift only produces some effect if we're moving towards uh, the source or away from the source. There's relative motion between the source and the observer. So uh, some of this information um, came from uh, Ast Society for Astronomical Science 31st Annual Symposium on Telescope Science. Uh, 2012. Um, another question. Suppose we look at the light from the center of the disk of the sun. So now asking about uh, what's the Doppler shift at the center of the disk of the sun. You need to think about this a little bit. The Doppler effect only uh, produces a change in wavelength if the source and observer have some relative motion towards or away from each other. What's happening at the uh, center of the disk? Well, the material at the center of the disk is moving sideways, not towards the Earth, but moving across our field of view. So as a consequence of this, the Doppler shift for the case of light coming from the center of the disk of the sun will be zero. We only get the Doppler shift in a situation where the source and observer are either approaching each other or moving away from each other. So if you have questions on this, be sure to ask your instructor.